sweep in a Texas doubleheader. Convincing W's over Houston and Dallas allowed the Seas to recover from their first home loss of the year against Denver. Insanely in the Big D, two-headed green monster Tatum and Brown either scored or assisted on 82% of Boston's 119 total points, as when they find that flow, wavelength, rhythm on another planet, focus, whatever you want to call it, it's on those nights that the capacity in which Jason and Jalen can carry an entire 15-man unit as a one-two punch alone is historically unparalleled. However, around the league, given Embiid's 70 piece on the same day of the year as Kobe's 81 18 years ago, with Philly's Embiid and Minnie's Towns doing the unthinkable, plus Phoenix's Durant breaking Chicago's heart with a patented game winner, the league best record Boston Celtics are being glossed over. To be fair, bad losses to the contending Bucks and Nuggets recently haven't helped Boston in terms of gaining too much league-wide attention as of late. Nevertheless, the 82-game marathon, no matter how good a team is, always results in rough L's with how a group collectively responds to them, revealing who they are. After letting the game slip out of their hands down the stretch against the reigning champs, and two weeks before that getting torched by a rivaled Milwaukee team, Boston getting right back on the winning wave after what could have been momentum draining L's was an overcoming of adversity that shows you Missoula's system is ready to again make a deep playoff run, but what'll it take to go the ultimate distance is my question. We're going to evaluate how Joe's squad got it done in the Lone Star State, but then detail a potential kryptonite that Boston has to put out the fire on in order to separate themselves as the ultimate top dog. Stay tuned for that evident Celtic issue which has a chance to ruin an all-time regular season when it matters most that needs fixing. But before that, a breakdown of the Texas two-step. Right quick, only 11.8% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, splash thumbs up. It takes a few seconds. It makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DeepFlowHoops and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. Jalen Brown non-hyperbically put Luka Doncic on skates, sending the man sliding with this double hezzy stop on a dime curry slide, maintaining the poise to finish the highlight with a made open jumper. On Boston's very next offensive possession, again attacking Doncic by using this double tween hezzy momentum tween combo, gains him leverage into a DeRozan-esque pump fake that baits Doncic into his landing space before despite embracing hefty contact, Brown stays composed to drain the and one. Post game, Luka humbly spoke on on the JB crossover that broke his ankles, saying quote unquote, I saw that video, I can't lie, that was really nice. While the humbleness from Doncic is commendable, likewise, so are year 8 JB's off the bounce shooting mechanics, as not only is the Boston Celtics phenom at shooting guard making a career best 49.3% of his overall field goal attempts, but on field goals specifically after taking 7 plus dribbles, Brown's 50.7% mark is the highest of his career and a 5% increase from last year. That's a man using his off seasons in general off time putting up endless shots after hefty dribble combinations to stay polished and in tune to the highest extent possible, as Brown's work ethic is inspirational. While the UC Berkeley products off the dribble shooting is one of the major contributors to him being the most composed version of himself in year 8 as a pro, equally contributive to that being the case has been Brown averaging a career high in assists per game, while posting his lowest turnover per game average in 5 years. Additionally, Jalen's ahead of any other Celtic not named Derek White or Jason Tatum in team-wide plus-minus, outscoring opponents by 276 points when he's on the floor. And the first of two in Texas and H-Town showed us how JB's value shows up all over the stat sheet, with the two-time All-Star recording his third career triple-double. In that matchup with the battling for a play-in tournament spot Houston Rockets, the bald mamba Derek White made what was the most mind-boggling play of the 23-24 campaign by at the the end of the second queue, sneaking up on Chen Goon to make Alperin's at the buzzer heave look silly by cleanly swatting it with his 99 overall block rating. But the most mind boggling part is White's swat would only act as a foreshadowing for Jason Tatum, also blocking an at the half from beyond half court heave on the very next night against former teammate Grant Williams, mercilessly stunning Batman by sending his launch at the horn airborne, making it a souvenir like it's an MLB game. Regarding Jason Tatum, somehow I've gone this entire vid without mentioning the kid from St. Louis became the first player in NBA history with 39 plus points, 11 plus rebounds, 5 plus assists, 3 plus steals, 2 plus blocks, and 0 turnovers in a game. Proving my point from the intro about the Jays' historically unparalleled production when they're cooking. 
You can't say the word cooking without envisioning a certain two-way Latvian luxury being the scoring pressure relief and much needed for Boston in prior years, consistent rim protection of Kristaps Porzingis, who, like Tatum, has also been set in records. Porzingis was the player of the game in Boston's W against Houston, as KP rejected five shots and knocked down six three-pointers, which was just the tenth time in NBA history that had ever been done. KP, along with coincidentally another former Celtic, Rafe LaFrance, are the only players to have done that multiple times. The next night, with KP nursing knee inflammation, the Celtics' energy didn't sway one bit even without a crucial piece, a next-man-up mentality they've gotten used to, as in Dallas. It helped Boston capture its ninth straight win, specifically against Kyrie Irving, since he stomped on Lucky at center court. A concern the Seas have to watch for as a team is up next, but from a league perspective, as you may know, it was an all-time rare night in the association, where Joel Embiid of the Philadelphia 76ers dropped a single-game most for the 23-24 season, 70 points on Victor Wembanyama. Yama. Both Embiid and another generational offensive big man in Carl Anthony Towns became the first players ever to score 60 on the same night in 45 years, cementing the fact that it was an all-time few and far between night around the NBA. You also can't take for granted Kevin Durant's double-clutch, seemingly unmakeable shot for the win over Alex Caruso, a patented KD game winner, but the impossibility of this one in particular made it one of the biggest basketball headlines of the news cycle. Durant is one of the clutchest players ever, without a doubt, by the way. Getting back to Boston, and the Celtics' potential kryptonite in 2024 is down the stretch execution. Against Denver, to say said execution was all over the place for the as I refer to him Heisenberg Joe Missoula would be putting it nicely. As straight up, the Celtics' biggest weakness was quite frankly exposed, Tatum and Brown have to find a way to get it done under pressure more decisively, whether it's attacking naturally to draw contact and get into the charity stripe, transitioning to the post when drives are cut off instead of settling for jumpers, or establishing that swift ball movement we know Boston's capable of developing in order to create looks the old-fashioned way through spacing, player movement, and sound passing reads. The Jays have to significantly better carry over what they do in quarters one through three and a half to clutch moments. As mentioned yesterday, with the playoffs looming 12 weeks away, the season heating up entails in order to not simply stay alive until June, but to have smooth success in and leading up to it, the Celtics have to polish their ability to both play from behind and execute offensively and defensively in the clutch in order to close out games more effectively, which is their biggest weakness in my opinion. We've rightfully hyped up the Celtics all year on this channel, They've been my main team, but late game meltdowns like the one against Denver will only lead to the Celtics having a deep playoff run yet coming out empty in terms of franchise title number 18, which accepting reality with an equal amount of optimism, pessimism, and unbias, late game execution has cost Boston and the Jays a title over the last few years. However, the basketball community has a ton of ammo at its disposal in terms of why this year's version of the Seas are different, so on that note, I ask you right now watching this video, as I'm the utmost grateful for, is 2024 different for the Jays and the C's in terms of the playoffs? Why or why not? Best answer gets next video shout out and competes for free merch of their choosing with the winners being set by June 21st. Get your takes in down below on the question. You can pause to read today's shout out winner on your screen along with these honorable mentions. Appreciate every take. This was your boy D-Flow and I'll see you next video.